I said, praise the Lord. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He did not say, I am one of the ways. There's a vast difference between those two statements. He says, I am the way. I am the reality. In other words, without Jesus, you can never be born again. You understand that? There is only salvation in the name of Jesus. Many people say, well, there's many rivers and they all lead to the same sea. Uh -uh. I don't know where they got that junk from. There's only one way. And one day, when we leave this earth, and we go up into the heavens, we shall all stand between, before the judgment seat of not any other name but Jesus Christ. And there'll be only one question that you'll be asked. Is it? Are you a believer? Did you accept Jesus? And you'll say yes. And then he'll either say to you, I know you or I don't know you. Amen? Amen. But for you, Jesus will say, I know you. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know, I often think about this. I know for sure in my heart that one day, leave this earth, I'm going to heaven. Amen. You understand that? Yes. As sure as I know my name, as sure as I see my face in the mirror, I know that one day when I close my eyes here, I'm going to heaven. There's no maybe about it. You understand? Turn to your neighbor and say, we are going to make it to heaven. But while on the earth, God requires you to rule and reign as a king. Give him a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Then take your seat. Hallelujah. And then turn to the book of Daniel. Hallelujah. You love Jesus, right? Hallelujah. I want to speak to you briefly this morning about you being the beloved of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm the beloved of God. You're saying it so sadly. Some of you look so sad. Inform your face that you are glad. Come on. Come on. T -t -t Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm the beloved of God. You know the story, did I tell you of the story that I heard somebody say, uh, there was a man, and uh, he was a preacher, by the way, and his wife one day wore, dressed up all in black, and she came out, and she started to cry, ha, 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 and so the preacher turned around and says, why are you crying? And she said, God died. So he turned around, and he says, God can't die. She said, God died. She says, you know how the ladies cry, you know. <laughs> God died. He says, no, surely God couldn't have died. Now he started to preach faith to the, to the, to the wife. He says, God couldn't have died. She said, no, God died. <laughs> And then he said, woman, what's wrong with you? He says, now I've got to preach you a sermon. So he started to preach. He says, God is from the beginning and to the end. He does not die. He cannot die. The word of God lives and abides. And he started to preach faith to her. And at the end, he said, amen. And he said to his wife, do you believe that now? I preach to you. She said, yes, but you behave all the time like God died. <laughs> so don't behave like God died. He did not die. 
and you are not dead. Say, I'm alive. I'm alive. And I'm well. I'm well. So you are the beloved of God. Now, you got your Bibles, right? Did I give you the chapter and verse? Chapter 10, verse number 7. I'm reading, first of all, from the, uh, the King James Version. It says, I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. <clears throat> you found it, right? Chapter 10, verse 7. But a great quaking fell upon them. That means fear came on them. <clears throat> so they fled to hide themselves. Therefore, verse 8 says, Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision. And there remained no strength in me. In other words, Daniel saw something. And because he saw an angel of the Lord, he felt weak in his knees. He says, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned into me corruption. Now that's what the King James Version says. But just to paraphrase, just to tell you in modern translation, what it means is that the blood drained out of my face and I felt pale because of the vision that I saw. And then he says, uh, verse 9, Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then I was in a deep sleep on my face, and my face towards the ground. In other words, he fell under the power. You, you know what I'm saying? He saw this great angel of God, and he fell under the power of God. And he was on the ground. And verse number 11 says, verse 10, And behold, a hand touched me, who set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, Daniel said, he says, when the angel of God spoke to me, I stood there trembling. And verse 12 says, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel. Say, fear not. fear not. That's what the angel said to him. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I'm come for thy words. Wow. <laughs> uh, let, let's just jump a little bit to verse number 15. It says, When he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face towards the ground, and I became dumb. And behold, one like the similitude of sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth, and I spake. And unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I've retained no strength. Verse 17. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with my Lord? For as for me, straight away there remained no strength in me, neither is there any breath left in me. Then they came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. Say, strengthened me. Strengthen me. And said... O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Be strong. And we had spoken unto me. I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Now, I want you to go back and uh, let's look at verse number 11. I want to speak to you about the fact that you are the beloved of God. Say, I'm the beloved of God. I'm going to show you how much God loves you. I'm telling you. Every time we talk about the fear of the Lord, the reverential fear of the Lord, and all of that, but God's people need to know how much God loves them. He said in verse 11, listen to this, And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man, Greatly beloved. Wow. Do you understand what that means? God said to Daniel, or the angel said to Daniel rather, he says, oh Daniel, greatly beloved of God. Hallelujah. 
You know what God is saying to you this morning? That you are in His presence, the one that serves Him. You are greatly beloved of God. Mm. That's enough to put my dancing shoes on. Because you are the beloved of... Listen, don't question God and say, Lord, do you love me? Of course He loves you. Doesn't matter what you go through in life. Doesn't matter how, what trial, what tribulation, what challenge faces you, what mountain faces you. You are the beloved of God. Listen to what the message says. The message Bible, that word uh, beloved translates like this in the message Bible. Oh, Daniel, man of quality. Wow. <laughs> you understand? So when God looks at you this morning, He says, man of quality. Now before the woman get upset, woman of quality. That's how God recognizes you. Hallelujah. Oh, Daniel, beloved of God. This morning, God calls your name and says, you are the beloved of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not thinking whether God loves me. I know I'm the beloved of God. Hallelujah. You understand? Listen, each one of you are unique before God. You are special before God. You know, when your mother and father decided to have a baby, you think they decided to have you, right? It is not true. They just decided to have a baby. That's all they wanted was a baby. And you came along. Think about that. <laughs> you just get quiet when I talk about things like that. You know, they tell us, uh, the medical people tell us, there's almost one million sperm cells fought. And one of them made it. And that one was you. Think about that. How's that? Out of a million, you won the race. Think about that. Some people say, well, I've been told later on in years, my mother and my dad, they wanted to abort me because uh, I, I came along and they had too many kids. Hey, but you still came along. It didn't matter because you were not born by the plan and by the will of flesh. The Bible says... God intrinsically wove you in your mother's womb. He, the Amplified Bible says He knitted you. <laughs> so I don't care whether they wanted to abort you or not. You came by the will of God. Hallelujah. You understand? He knew you. Man, long before your mom and dad decided to have you, God already knew you by name. Some of you are not getting excited. You'll get excited next month. I mean, there must be an expression. I mean, I can't read something like that and remain sober. You understand? People are people of expression. I always say, imagine you go up to a woman and say, well, she says, you know, I love you. And you just go, mm, I love you too. Think about that. <laughs> People mold themselves wrongly. People must be with expression. There's nothing wrong with expression. It's a warmthness. It's an expression. In other words, I get excited. I mean, before I came into service, I was singing myself to the Lord. You understand? I didn't have to be in front of people to sing. I was singing by myself, and the anointing came on me strong as I sang to the Lord. Why? I was expressing myself before God. You understand? When you hear a message like this, you cannot sit in your seat. What's wrong? You brought super glue to church? I mean, if, a, if the neighbor's bulldog chases you, boy, some of you that are 77, you'll do a 100-meter sprint. I'm telling you. But in the presence of God, you can't be moved. Or you even say to yourself, I shall not be moved. No, brothers and sisters in Christ, 
Be joyful in the presence of God. You understand? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Express yourself. Angels are beholding us. You understand? There's angels all around this place. There's the Holy Spirit here. So as you get excited about God, he said, Daniel, beloved of God. Daniel, man of quality. That's what God thinks about you. You are the beloved of God. I mean, the angel of God communicated that to Daniel. He says, you are a man beloved of God. I'm here to tell you, you're a man and a woman that's beloved of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, another word that he said was this in verse number 11. He says, oh, Daniel, greatly beloved. He says, understand the words that I speak unto you and stand upright. Too many of us are sitting down because of the trials, the persecutions, and the tribulations. The angel of God said to Daniel, he said, stand upright. A man and a woman of God stands upright. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. A child of God can never be oppressed. Your position in life, your stature in life is to be upright. Yeah. Hallelujah. Many people have said this. They said you can never knock a good man down. They took Jesus Christ. They crucified him and buried him. Three days later, he stood up. <laughs> a born again child of God. You can take him. You can take her. You can press them down. You can put them down. You can speak all manner of evil against them. You can try and call them names. People label you. They tag you. And they write you off. But God looks. He says, this is the one I want. Hallelujah. You understand? I, I don't know. I don't know why God works like that. But the one people write off. The one they've tagged. The one they've begged. God says, that's the one. Hallelujah. You understand? You understand? Hallelujah. They might have said you won't make it. They might have said you'll never become a pastor or a preacher. You'll never become a doctor or a lawyer. But God says you'll make it. Hallelujah. And you know, one man with God is a majority. Don't be concerned about the things that you've been through. You have gone through to come through. Hallelujah. You understand? When the Hebrew boys were thrown in the fire, when they came out, the Bible says they did not even smell of smoke. So it's okay. You can go through the fire. But that's not your place. God did not promise you you'll never go through the fire. But he said, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. So what he was saying to you, you'll go through the fire, but you'll come out on the other side. You understand? Hallelujah. The devil may have tried to get a hold of you. He might have caused you to commit adultery. He may have caused you to steal. He may have caused you to lie. He may cause you to cheat. But that was not the end. God said, I'm teaching this man. I'm training this man. Hallelujah. So comes a day God separates you and he places his anointing on top of you. And now there's a new man and a new woman in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People look and say, I thought he'd never make it. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. He brings us over. He brings us through. You are greatly beloved of God. You can't tell me God doesn't love me. Religion doesn't have to teach me that. The church doesn't have to teach me that. I have got two eyes. And I can read my own Bible. And the Bible says, Daniel, beloved of God. Rashan, beloved of God. You understand? It's too late for you to come and tell me I can't make it. You understand that? 
It's too late for your critics to come around and tell you you can't make it. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. You are greatly beloved of God. Hallelujah. Now, now hang on a minute. Sit down. Listen. Daniel was a prophet. But he was in the Old Testament. He was not even born again. You understand, prior to Pentecost, no man could be born again. It was only after Jesus came, died, resurrected, and the Holy Spirit was dispensed on the earth that it was possible for people to become born again. So prior to that time, no man could be born again. Yes, they had a measure of the Spirit upon them. God was with them strong. But they were not new creation beings. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Now, if God said to Daniel, by the angel, Daniel, beloved of God, what do you think he says about you? You understand now. Hallelujah. <laughs> they might see a man or a woman struggling. You might be struggling with sin. You might be struggling with different issues in your life. But as you're traveling, God sees a beloved. Hallelujah. You understand. You're a candidate for God's blessing. I've met, I've met many people in my life. Some of them preachers. And they glory about the fact that, you know, I never drank. I never smoked. I never womanized. I was just so righteous. Now, that was not my experience. I did all of those things. <laughs> they kind of, when they talk like that, want to make you feel that small. But because I have gone through all of that, I understand the grace of God. You understand that? I understand the love of God. I'm not standing by my own works. The Bible tells us our works will not stand. But how do we come? We come by the grace of God. Paul, the apostle, was a serial killer. He killed so many people. But after the Damascus Road experience, he wrote later on, he says, I have not sinned. I've wronged no man. After killing so many people, he says, I, he had a revelation of the grace of God. In other words, your sin, your wrongdoings in life is not counted against you. <laughs> you understand? God doesn't see them anymore. He just sees a man and a woman beloved of God. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to this. Verse 12. Turn to verse 12. It says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm saying to you this morning, a child of God does not walk in fear. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. Let me tell you something about fear. Fear not, and the words, the phrases, do not be afraid, are recorded in the Bible over 60 times. Fear equals to bondage. It's subjection to bondage. Fear works bondage. Fear is supported by an evil spirit. Fear depends on what it sees. Faith depends on God's word, which is eternal. Fear is a spiritual force, although it's negative. Fear comes... By hearing, listen, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10. How does fear come? Fear also comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the world. Not the word. God, faith is built up by you listening to God's word, grabbing a hold of God's word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But fear comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the world. Mm. But you are not people that hear 
the word of the world. You are in the world, not of the world. So fear comes by hearing and hearing the word of the world. It comes by hearing the word of evil spirits. It comes by hearing the word of your senses. Fear is developed through meditating and acting on Satan's lies. Satan supports, advocates, and develops fear. Fear becomes doubt and unbelief when it is acted upon. Fear has to be received before it enters your heart. We receive what we look at. So don't look at the wrong thing. So fear cannot get into your heart. Fear acted on produces the law of sin and death. But faith produces what? Life. We are delivered from a spirit of fear. The angel of God speaking to Daniel. He said, Daniel, fear not. I'm speaking to you this morning. I'm saying to you, fear not. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. You cannot fear. You cannot be afraid. Afraid of what? Of circumstances. They're under your feet. Of evil spirits. They're under your feet. Of people. No. The Bible says, Cursed is a man that leaneth on the arm of flesh, but blessed is he whose trust is in the Lord. What does Proverbs? The righteous are as bold as a lion. The wicked man flees when no man pursues him. But the righteous, they are bold. You are bold as a lion. You cannot be afraid. They can fire you. But does it mean to say you must be afraid because they fire you? No. It's just for your promotion. You'll get a better job. You understand? A child of God is not born to suffer. You cannot suffer. Refuse to suffer in life. I said refuse to suffer in life. God's got a position for you. God's way is upward and forward. Not backward. Nowhere in the Bible have I come, and I've read my Bible, nowhere it says to me, it says, and God demotes you, and God wants to frustrate you. No! God loves you. No man and woman of God who will pray. And God says, I don't want to hear your prayer. You understand? He hears your prayer. He listens to your prayer. Hallelujah. Now God's timing might not be your timing. But hey, if he's heard you, then you know his timing's right. So don't give up. One translation of the Bible says, don't cave in. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. You are made of better substance. God is in you. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to verse number 18 of chapter 10. And said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee. Wow, I like that. That means God is saying to you this morning, peace in your home, peace in your life, peace in your finances, peace all over you. You cannot be a person that's confused. You are not confused. Sometimes you may act like you're confused. You may even portray an image that you are confused. But God's people are never confused. You understand that? Because you know the mind of the Lord. You know the voice of God. You know the ways of God. Let me kill some religion. I was talking to a man the other day. He says, well, you know, God's ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, I, instead of saying amen, I said, shut up. <laughs> that was the Old Testament. God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 1.30, Christ has become to us wisdom. So that means I have the wisdom of Christ. I have the mind. Listen, I operate. Oh boy. How, how can God's people be confused? My ways are not His ways. His thoughts are not. Hey, I'm in Him. The Bible says I was crucified with Christ. 
Colossians tells me I was risen together with Him. And then Ephesians tells me I was seated with Him in heavenly places. So I'm one with Him. So if I'm in Him and He's in me, I have His thoughts. I have His wisdom. <laughs> you understand? So I'm not confused anymore. You say, well, a pastor, things look dark. No, not to you. Not to put on the lights. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Now, now think about this for a minute. If Jesus said, you are the light, listen, listen carefully. That's why I said too many people speed read the Bible. No, read with intelligence. God has made, given us intelligence. We have been to school. We are not illiterate. We have been taught how to discern things. We've been taught how to divide. We've been taught how to categorize. You understand? We've been taught how to present things. So you have been trained. So use that. The Bible says, what, what was I talking about? The light. Listen to this. He says, you are the light of the world. Mm. Now, listen. That means wherever you are functioning, you are the light yes. to the world. The world is looking to you. Yes. How can you walk in darkness? Yes. Come on, talk to me. Yes. Think about what I'm saying. If you are the light of the world, how can you be in darkness? No, you cannot be in darkness. If you are the light to the world, then you're a light to yourself. Yes. Because in you is light. The day you were born again. Let me tell you something. Do you know when angels and demonic forces in the spirit world, when they look at you, you know what they see? They, all they see is a glowing light. That's all they see. You know, the evil one is full of darkness. But the children of God is full of light. Wherever you step into, it has light. Darkness cannot stand the presence of light. When you walk into a place, born again, full of the Holy Ghost, demons must check out. Sometimes it's not even necessary for you to speak a word. They must just go. Why? They just look at you like... <laughs> ah. I'm telling you, it's the truth. One time, I went, and I told you the story, I went to a woman's house, and she was plagued by a tokolosh. I had two incidents with the Tokolosh. The one time I took a man who knew the doctrine. Man, he knows the Bible. He's a walking Bible. He can quote every scripture, but he knows the letter of the law, not the spirit. So I walked into this house, and this lady was plagued by Tokoloshes and demons. It was hideous. I mean, my tongue just, you know, just went funny in my mouth. And as I went into the house, the demons jumped on this man. It leapt on him, and he, and he said, he said, Pastor, pray for me, pray for me. I'm thinking, where's your scripture now? Where's all your doctrine now? Then this other time, I went to a home, and a tokolosh had come into this house. And so I took, my, my wife was with me, and we were praying, just the two of us, and this woman was living alone in the flat. So I said, in the name of Jesus, you foul him. I wasn't even screaming. I said, you foul Demon, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. And I said, out of this house. And God opened my eyes. I could see. I saw the small tokolosh. It was about this big. Matted hair. It was so ugly. I wouldn't want him to marry my enemy. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was ugly. It was hideous. It was terrible. I mean, he, he looked like he just came out of hell. But boy, when I said the name of Jesus and God opened my eyes, I saw this thing. Listen, I used to be an athlete at school before. And I know what a 100 meter is like. This thing did a 100 meter in two seconds. I'm telling you, it just went just at the name of Jesus. Just at the name of Jesus. So... Here's my question to you then. How can we fright of, you know, be afraid of Tokolosh? No. Demons? No. 
See why I cannot be afraid of the devil. I've seen the devil. Now some of you don't know that, but I have seen the devil face to face. I literally saw the devil. One day, I was praying, 3 o'clock in the morning, and then my eyes suddenly opened. I'm not talking about these eyes, I'm talking about spiritual eyes. And I saw the devil. And the first response was, wow, what is this? And, and you know, fear wanted to grab a hold of me. And the Lord said to me, he can't touch you. And then I said, but God, in my heart, I said, but God, spirits are not kept behind by walls. I mean, spirits can walk through walls. I said, why can't the devil go through the door? And I didn't have the answer. On that night, a pastor from Australia had dinner with me. And he came to the lounge. He says, can we pray? I said, okay, let's pray. So he was praying. And the Lord used that man to give me a word. He said this to me. He says, brother, he says, the glory of the Lord is so strong upon you. Is so strong upon your house. He said that no devil can even come near you because of the glory of the Lord. So, here's the issue. You are the beloved of God. The glory is so strong on you. <laughs> How can you be afraid now? How? Afraid you? No. Tell your neighbor, no, 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 no. And some people talk about weird stories. Weird stories. They are throwing powder or ashes or nonsensical stuff like that. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, after you became the beloved of God and a new creation in Christ, the man that blesses you shall be blessed. The man that curses you shall be cursed. The anointing on your life is double-edged sword. God will bless those that bless you. God will curse those that will curse you. Let someone curse you. Let someone dig a pit for you. It will come to them. It will be their portion. You cannot be afraid. The Bible promises us, even if you take any deadly thing and drink it, it shall not harm you. So how can you be afraid of what bad words they've spoken? Hey, speak! What are you afraid about? What powders they bring? Bring it! <laughs> they don't know they are creating their future. A child of God cannot be touched. He cannot be harmed because you are a new creation in Christ. Have you not read the Apostle Paul's life? Not even a serpent, a poisonous, venomous serpent could take him down. Ay, ay, ay. Turn to Isaiah quickly. My Lord, that's only my first scripture. Boy, oh boy. What did I tell you, Isaiah? I must find it. Say, so I cannot be afraid. I cannot be afraid. Hallelujah. All right, Isaiah 49, verse 16. Where did the time go to? I've got about f mm, 29 scriptures and I've only done one. Okay, well, just do this one. It's the truth. Isaiah 49, verse 11. And I, you got it? You got it? Say amen. amen. I will make all my mountains away and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far and low, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. And break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Last scripture. Listen to this. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me. And my Lord hath forgotten me. Listen to the response of the Lord. That was the question. That was, that was an accusation placed before God. Zion, which is the church, is saying, Oh Lord, you have forgotten us. You have forsaken us. Listen to the answer of the Lord. He says, But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me. And my Lord hath forgotten me. The answer of God. Can a woman... Forget her suckling child? That she could not have compassion 
on the son of a whom? It says, yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. <laughs> God can never forget you. Listen to this now. It says, behold, verse 16 in the King James. It says, behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Listen to what the Amplified Bible says. It says, Behold, the same scripture, verse 16. It says, Behold, I have indel indelibly tattooed a picture of you. This is God speaking to you. He says, Behold, in the Amplified, it says, I have indelibly tattooed a picture of you, not on my palm or the palms of my hand. He says, on each of the palms of my hand. That means when God looks at the palms of his hands, guess who's there? <laughs> you understand now? How can you ask God a question? Lord, have you forsaken me? Have you forgotten me? No. He says, you are the beloved of the Lord. You've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. You have been consecrated. You have been set aside. God has... Oh boy. Listen. God has placed you on a pedestal as a trophy. He says to the devil, you remember the conversation that Job had with God. I mean, Satan had with God about Job. Now, you know that conversation is no more applicable now because Satan cannot come in the presence of God. He's cast out since Jesus came, right? You know that. That's another teaching altogether. But listen to this. God goes and he says, you see that guy there? Satan says, yes. See, he was a drug addict. You know that. Yes, I made him one. You see, he's an alcoholic. Yes, I made him one. You see that woman there? Yes. You see, she was a prostitute. Yes, I made her one. You see, she was ugly. Yes, I made her one. You see, she was a street woman. Yes, I made her one. God says, now look at them now. I've made them a trophy. <laughs> you understand? They were going nowhere. But look at what I've done. I've now tattooed them on the palm of each of my hand. I have a picture of them. They're precious to me. Now, Satan, let me tell you something. You can never touch them. They are untouchables. You know the mafia movies? You haven't seen them, right? You're afraid if you say, I saw them, Pastor, I'd say you're not saved. I love mafia movies. Oh, I love it. If there's a mafia movie, I love to watch it. You know, The Good Fellow, what's the other ones? The Godfather, part one, two, and three. Uh, and there was many of them, I know. I've watched all of them. The Untouchables were one of them. I watched them. And I love WWF wrestling. I do. There's nothing wrong with that. And when the guy that wins and he thumps the other guy, and I say, ah! <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Because Christians must know how to fight. Because in Ephesians, it tells us, fight the good fight of faith. Some of us don't know how to fight, so we become wimps. God doesn't want wimps in the kingdom of God. He wants you to be strong. So are you fighting the devil? No. You're fighting the good fight of faith. In other words, you're standing your ground. Do you understand that? Are you listening to me? Some of us become so spiritually minded, we have no earthly good. God can't use you. You know, you, you ought to be real. We're real people. You've got to be real. But inside of my heart, I've hidden the word of the Lord. So when I come to sickness, I can break its power. When I come to devils, I can cast it out. You understand? Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, as I finish, 
you are the beloved of God. The Bible says, the angel speaking to Daniel, he said, Daniel, fear not. What must you fear? Death? No. Sickness? No. Financial poverty? No. I cannot be afraid. I do not have a spirit of fear. I will overcome. God is with me. And some people cry out to say, oh Lord, everybody's forsaken me. Only you are left. That's all you need. One man with God is a majority. That's all you need. Tell your neighbor, that's all I need. What do you need is this God. If God is in your camp, boy, oh boy, you're on the road of success. Hallelujah. Stand up to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are the beloved of God. I remind myself all the time, God is with me strong. Tell your neighbor, God's with me strong. Listen. Before you go, all week this week, remind yourself, I'm anointed. Look at your hands. Look at your hands. Say, I'm anointed. Say, in these hands, I carry the power of God. Say, sickness and disease shall not overcome me. Say, the circumstances of life cannot overcome me. Say, I'm anointed. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand. You afraid? No. You don't even know what the meaning of afraid is. I cannot be afraid. You understand that? Afraid of people? I always say this to people because I've experienced this. There might be someone in charge of you. That's giving you a hard time. That person must get prepared to get fired. <laughs> I'm telling you. Do they know who they're touching? They are touching the beloved of God. Oh. You understand? When someone attacks me, I sit and I laugh. I do. I just laugh. You might think I get sad. No, I've seen, I've seen too many things. I'm not a novice in the faith. I've been around a long time. We've been serving God 26 years now. Listen to this. People have attacked me. They died. Young people died. They lost their life. I attended their funerals. And my heart went out. I said, Lord, I said, look at this foolish man. What he had to go through. You think when someone touches you, God's going to let them go? Not that you are wishing death on them, but they are playing with their lives. I'm telling you. So now when people attack me, I sit in my chair and I laugh. I said, oh boy, they don't know what they're doing. Because, because, because we are not ordinary. We are not ordinary people. We are in the bosom of God. We live with God. You understand? He's in us. We're in Him. His words are my words. His thoughts are my thoughts. His wisdom is my wisdom. God is with me strong. Tell your neighbor, God is with me strong. Say, I cannot fail. Hallelujah. Say, look at me. Say, I'm beautiful. God calls you that. Everyone living in the city of Zion, which is the church of God, are beautiful. God does not make anything ugly. <laughs> Listen, do not go and ask someone, am I beautiful? Do I look handsome? What a stupid question. It is. You should already know it now. That means if you are asking, it means you don't know. Say, I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. Turn around to someone say, I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. Say, look at, look at me. Now, some of you are going like this. I feel sorry for you. I said, turn to your neighbor and say, look at me, I'm beautiful. Be 
because <laughs> you know why God does not make anything ugly now you might be tall and some might be fat and some may be round and some may be light skin and some on dark skin some have straight hair someone have you know hair that's curly you understand it doesn't matter some of you might have a big nose some of you a small nose but God made you beautiful hallelujah you understand now some people might think well that's being arrogant no you're not being arrogant you're just merely stating a fact you understand you got to know who you are I know who I am in Christ you know why I can't look backwards in my faith you know why I can never be like Lot's wife you know why she didn't know what God made her I know what God made me hallelujah amen